There's support all across the country for electrification, for dealing with climate change, and electrifying the economy, basically, to reduce GHG emissions, meeting our 2030 targets and our 2050 targets under the Paris Agreement. Clean Energy Canada has just done a survey of British Columbians' attitudes towards climate change in clean BC. And I'm going to be talking to Trevor Melanson from Clean Energy Canada. So welcome to the interview, Trevor. Good, Markham. Now, why don't you? St why don't we start with uh, an overview of the survey, please? Sure. Yeah. So we basically wanted to see how British Columbians felt about their economic recovery coming out of COVID, um, also in the context of climate action and investing in clean energy. As as we're all thinking about as we come out of this, how do we want our economy to look? And interestingly, Premier John Horgan here in British Columbia had actually gone on the record saying that they intended to put clean BC, which is the province's climate plan, at the, at the center of uh, economic recovery here in BC. So we wanted to kind of see, you know, how British Columbians felt about this. And in fact, the province is currently engaging in a public consultation process right now. There's, they're doing town halls and, and surveys, and I think that runs until uh, for another week. Um, so it was kind of, you know, an interesting time to actually get some, some data on how people feel about this. And uh, the results were, were very interesting. I mean, we got 79% of British Columbians said that they agree that the economic changes brought about by COVID-19 provide an opportunity for us to do more to fight climate change. Um, and when you asked, when you took that a step further and said, well, should this be at the center of our economic recovery, which is, which is how the premier put it, um, we saw 57% of people say yes to only 36% of people who opposed it, um, with, you know, other people being uncertain. So, um, even that more ambitious statement about making it, you know, kind of like the center of, of, the, of our recovery plan seemed to pull quite well in BC. Um, you know, we also looked, uh, we, we asked, um, what parts of the economy, for example, uh, would people like the government to invest in as well? And we talk a lot about tourism, right? And as we talk a lot about tourism and film being, you know, because they've been really impacted by, by COVID, so it makes sense that we're talking about them. And, you know, we, we did see that people generally do support investing in those sectors, but we gave them an option of, of 10 different areas. So clean energy and technology was one of them, but also tourism and high tech industries, film was on there and oil and gas and LNG. And um, interestingly, what we saw was number one, what people want investment in was clean energy and technology. And it, it won by pretty much uh, a landslide. Basically, we, gave, we asked people to score it on zero to six and, um, what we saw was 64% uh, of people said rated it as a five or a six in terms of importance. Gotcha. Um, so what do they think about clean BC? I'm very curious about that because essentially the Horgan government has said that it plans to electrify the BC economy because the uh, right now we're having about 64 and a half megatons a year of GHG emissions. They want to get down to, uh, I think it's 14 or 16 by 2040 or 2050. That's pretty ambitious. Do British Columbians agree with those goals? Are they are they supportive? Uh, I mean, I, I doubt most British Columbians are aware of specific policy goals um, in general, and and also as it pertains to clean BC. Um, but we did we did ask about clean BC to, to see both what awareness was and also what approval of it was, um, and what we found was that approval of it is very high. So when we asked, well, first of all, we asked awareness and we asked if people were very aware or somewhat aware, only 8% of British Columbians said that they were very aware of the existence of Clean BC. 42% said they're somewhat aware. So basically half of British Columbians had some level of, um, expressed some level of awareness. Um, but then when we provided them with sort of a summary of sort of the high level bullets of what Clean BC um, aims to do, what we saw was 86%, 86%, that's a very high number um, politically, uh, approved of the approach of Clean BC with only 8% disapproval. So, um, you know, I think that awareness is not going to be super high on these policy things and people generally understand things at a pretty high level, but Clean VC is clearly, clearly a, uh, a winner in terms of 
it's likability, but it's, it's not necessarily winning as much as it could be in terms of awareness. So I think the opportunity is for the, is for the province to, to basically uh, market it more than it has been doing so. Well, I think it's fair, generally uh, fair to say that uh, people don't connect to facts, they connect to emotions, they connect to stories. And it sounds like what, uh, if they, what's needed is uh, more and better narratives and more promotion of those narratives as opposed to the specifics of clean BC. Would, would you agree with that? That's a tough one. I mean, I think we see with, so, you know, at my organization, we've obviously talked a lot about electric vehicles and energy efficiency rebates and a lot of the things that are, that are part of clean BC. So we have some insight in terms of what, what resonates with people, but also what drives the news cycle, right? So there's, there's something you can put on social media and that will perform a certain way. And there's something that you put out into the media and that'll perform a certain way. And, and so we talked about, and I think Queen BC is a bit of a victim of its own success, right? Because we talked about 86% approval. What that means is that it's not controversial, right? People like it. And when something is not controversial, it tends not to drive the news cycle, right? The news cycle here in media, you know, this news cycle is driven by tension. Stories are created crafted around tension. And I think one of the, it's not a problem, <laughs> but one of the issues with, around awareness with Clean BC is unlike things that have been more contentious like carbon pricing federally, um, it's just not controversial. And so it's not been in the news cycle very much. I mean, we saw more coverage of the electric vehicle um, mandate that was uh, introduced in BC and around the electric vehicle rebates, um, those, those did well, and we've observed electric cars tend to do well in general, people are interested in them, they're, they're a bit more tangible and they have more of sort of a consumer choice um, element to them, so that plays well, but you know, getting, getting energy retrofits in the news and going viral, like it's, it's a challenge. So I think uh, in, in communicating Clean BC, I think that you know, the province needs to think about perhaps what are those areas where people are really engaged and how and again there's this issue of tension i mean climate change of course is is tension right this is trying to solve climate change but it's a big far away thing and so something like i think the zero emission vehicle mandate is a good example because that was about um there not being enough electric cars on on lots so british columbians were going on these six month wait lists to get their hands on a car so suddenly it's um where it's about you know consumer choice. I can't get the thing I want to get right now, and that's an immediate threat. That's an immediate tension. And I think that's part of the reason that story played it up so well. I think about, for example, there's this new movie Palm Springs, and it's on Hulu, and I'm Canadian, so I can't get Hulu. Right? It's that kind of tension where, as a Canadian, I want this thing that I can't get. Trevor, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it, and uh, know that we'll be talking again in the near future. All right. Thank you.